one sense, we like to have uh, stable prices. But the market, when we talk about stock, love to have prices that are going up, right? <laughs> and they're not necessarily looking for stable prices. Well, those, those who uh, work in the stock market, they actually like them to be volatile because they know they can't make them go up continuously, but they can make them fluctuate wildly. And it's in the fluctuation that the speculator can make, uh, the sort of predatory speculators can make the most money. Um, you, get the, you get the others to panic, prices uh, drop and you buy up what they had and the stock price rises again and it's a lot easier to push them down than it is to pull them up so <laughs> that's usually the all you have to do is run to them and that pulls them up right it does certainly it yeah. doesn't really have to do with the value of the company it just has to do with how many people are willing to go there right as, uh, as capital accumulates it it somehow outgrows the need for capital is are, are we saying <clears throat> that as far as the productive economy goes for for the short term it outgrows it does well, but I think it, it's important to understand that it, it grows so rapidly because of the particular property uh, re relations that government creates. So by creating these uh, stocks and corporations and uh, and ownership of natural resources in particular, I think those are two key ones to think about. It creates the conditions where where the wealth is concentrating, and therefore uh, new kinds of debt have to be. Uh, we get that imbalance between consumer spending and investment spending and government spending. That, and that imbalance creates the need to, find, to actually loan to government or loan to consumers. Eventually, that's what we did too. We came up with consumer debt as a kind of a whole new uh, solution to the structural debt problem. Let's talk a little bit more, more about structural debt because you mentioned that a couple of times and I want to exactly see how that fits in the structure. Okay. I mean, you're saying it's like needed because, because why? Because, because of the concentration of wealth, there's certain uh, people who will, who will receive incomes from their wealth without working, without contributing to the economy. Just by holding that wealth, they'll receive income so large, they can't possibly consume it. They, 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 they may buy a couple houses, they may have a summer house in Greece, or uh, a few yachts, or, or you know, private jets. They, 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 they spend all that money, but there's still an enormous excess that they can't possibly spend. And so the only way to then for the economy to keep going is for them to find someone to borrow, whether that's for investment or whether it's the government or whether it's consumers. And so we end up with that. That is the structural debt. It's a debt that has to grow, has to exist, has to uh, and can never be repaid. Um, it can be repaid in kind of a whack-a-mole kind of way. One person will get their mortgage finally paid off. But once they do, the bank understands that it's vital for them immediately to get that those funds loaned again to someone else but there's also that growing structural debt so they also have to find someone else to borrow so it's it it's constantly growing even when some places here or there it gets paid off paid down well this is clear this is worldwide this is a worldwide con uh, condition this has nothing to do with just the economy of the united states or any yeah. kind of local phenomena no no i mean i think some of the problems we're seeing uh in in europe with greece and italy and spain and, and so it's debtor, nations taking on an awful lot of debt. That's part of this problem. And it's not to say that uh, there isn't something irresponsible going on in those places, but because, because we have this debt-driven economy and there, there are irresponsible countries, there are irresponsible cities, there are irresponsible people, but because we have this debt-driven economy, it's those irresponsible people, those irresponsible entities that are actually helping our economy go. And so even those who are taking on no debt owe some debt of gratitude <laughs> to those who are taking on the debt to keep their jobs in place and keep the economy rolling. This is almost a mind blower. What's coming to me is like uh, even foreign aid is not something that we're just having a big heart and we're just digging into our deep pockets and saying, oh, we need to lend that money. It's and we true. have to uh, find somebody needy in order to borrow it. Yes, yes. Is yeah. it, it's just like that, isn't it? And yeah. it's national policy to somehow to find a needy nation and somehow force them to take our excess capital and even if they pay 1% or 2% interest or something and somehow guarantee it by the world IMF or something or uh, somehow protect our, 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 uh, our holders of that capital, our, our domestic uh, rich people. We have to protect them the best we can, but we have to find a way to... Uh, to send that money out somewhere and get it to so-called work. Yeah, and, and I think that that's part of the, probably the more disturbing part of the structural debt problem is that one of the solutions we've found easier and easier to go with is lending to buy armaments. And, uh, and our entire defense apparatus is growing so rapidly because it is such an effective way of, of loaning funds <clears throat> that don't really do anybody any good, usually. 
Um, they they are actually very destructive of cities and towns and and countries. And uh, but it 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 find it places an outlet for this structural debt to find a, a borrower. And we borrow funds to buy planes and weapons and and missiles and and those simply then get used up and then we can buy more. And it's not it kind of it takes it out of the normal everyday economy that that uh, might actually be helping someone. And we're saying that is all due to the concentration of wealth. The fact that we concentrate wealth, we have to find a place to put that wealth as that, that makes it work, which means somewhere that would bear interest, that would bear dividends, that would bear something. And because of the con- concentration of wealth, the world is in a fix. Yeah, I, I mean, I think there, there are other, obviously there are other reasons that are given and, 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 since, and they're even sincere about why we might go to war in one place or another. But um, but I think that behind it there is that structural debt problem, and and there's a need you know there's a need to find reasons to start a war, or find reasons to attack another country that that are help that help drive that motivating those other motivations. Yeah. Whether there's a need or not, at least it's very helpful if we could, <laughs> right? <laughs> exactly. 